man is walking his dog at night. Someone comes jogging from behind and stops. He recognizes the man as Vaughn Eli, who is a well-respected mortician in town. They chat for a while about Eli losing his wife, Rosemary, and coping with a loss, when all of a sudden, Eli takes his gun out and demands him to move his van. He asks him what is this about, and Eli responds that he's sure he knows what it is about. They reach a cemetery where Eli makes him dig Rosemary's grave at gunpoint. He then orders him to open the coffin. The coffin is empty, and before the man could respond, Eli hits him and he falls into it. He begs to be let out, but Eli throws a light at him and closes the coffin. The scene then cuts to two years later. At a high school, students are discussing the telltale heart with their English teacher, Sylvia. After school is over, we see four friends, Travis, Danny, Brian, and Abby, talking to each other. Travis has lost his sister and thinks he saw something supernatural that day. Brian makes fun of this, upsetting everyone. While going back home, Mr. Sovek, their PE teacher, stops Travis, trying to convince him to join track tryouts, but Travis is uninterested. Danny drops Travis at Eli's place where Travis mows his lawn as a part-time job. After finishing, Travis tells him that he is done, but Eli isn't happy with his work and instructs him to redo it. Eli tells him how his wife and Travis's sister both were smart but are now gone. Later that evening, while Travis and Abby are doing their homework, Abby requests Travis to tell her the full story about the ghost he mentioned at school. Travis tells her when he was seven years old, one night, some noises coming from his sister's room woke him up to which he followed. When he opened the door to his sister's room, he saw her lying on the bed with a bright purple light hovering and whispering over her. He demanded it to leave his sister alone. Travis says that his mom called 911, but it was too late, saying she would have been 21 now. Travis somehow feels guilty for just standing there, frozen, but Abby consoles him, saying that it's not his fault. The same night, the four friends go out and have fun while talking about ghosts. Danny tells them that people have seen ghosts around Eli's house, and they start joking around, not believing it, but Abby suggests they check it out. They go to Eli's place and hide behind a nearby tree. Soon, they see two shadows of a man and a woman dancing. They feel unusual knowing that Eli lives alone. The scene cuts to the next day where Brian isn't convinced it was a ghost even though Abby thinks it was. Brian says that the man must be dating someone, but Abby says that the woman's moves were weird. Another morning, Eli calls to fix his van and the mechanic tells him that it will take time. In school, Travis learns from Danny that Mrs. Moore's husband has been missing for two years and so she is getting a divorce. Later at lunch, they talk about the ghost and Brian is still not convinced so they plan to go again when Eli won't be home. At night, not seeing Eli's van, they assume that he isn't home, so they again sneak from afar. They see the two figures dancing again, but Brian is still not convinced. Abby wants to get a closer look, and despite Travis's protest, they get inside, leaving Travis behind to guard. Outside, Travis notices the lights go out in the room. The three of them sneak upstairs towards the room. They get inside to find Rosemary's body lying on the bed and freak out while the lights turn on. Traumatized, they rush out of the room, only to find Eli there. He asks them what are they doing in his house. He mutters that this is bad and then orders them to get out. They start to leave, but he grabs Danny from behind and starts suffocating him while Abby and Brian get out. They tell Travis that Eli got Danny and they need to run, but Travis goes inside to save his friend. He asks Eli to let Danny go. Eli throws Danny down the stairs, instantly knocking him out. He walks down and stomps on his neck, saying that stairs are dangerous and most accidents happen on them. Travis runs out where Abby and Brian are waiting. They run away while Eli calls the police, saying that an accident has happened in his house. Next, we see the three friends in custody, but the police don't believe them. Instead, they get arrested for trespassing. The sheriff tells them that they searched the house and didn't find the body that they claimed Eli had. They don't believe Travis even when he says that he witnessed Danny's murder. They show them the picture of mannequins found in Eli's house, thinking that the kids got confused. They are soon informed that Danny has died in the hospital. Later, the sheriff meets Eli, and they talk about how kids make up stories about morticians, thinking it's funny. Eli says that everyone has suffered enough, and he won't press any charges, and the sheriff says that he's a good man. Then Eli goes to the attic and talks to his wife's body, telling her that she needs to stay there for a few more days. 
Travis's mom tries to console him, saying that she believes him and asks him to promise to never go near that house because she's afraid of what that man might do to him. A few days pass while Travis and Abby grow restless to get Eli punished. They decide to go back into the house to take evidence of Rosemary's body. They get to the house and sneak up on Eli dancing with his wife. Abby tells Travis that her parents wouldn't let her go with him after the incident, so she told them she is going to Sarah's house, and she has left her phone with her so that she could lie to her parents that Abby is at a slumber party if they call. Soon, they see the van leave and begin to trespass again. Abby stumbles upon a tarp. Travis removes it to see an empty human-sized box. They don't think much of it and continue moving. Travis goes in, breaking the window. He creeps to the bedroom and takes the picture, only to find the bed empty. Outside, as Abby is guarding the door, Eli creeps up behind her and knocks her out. Travis rushes out of the room, only to find Eli pointing a gun at him. He demands to know where Abby is, but Eli tells him that he is in no position to make demands and reminds him that he is a burglar, and in Texas, they have the right to shoot burglars. Travis says that he is crazy and Eli charges at him, but Travis manages to run out of the house looking for Abby while Eli shoots at him. Travis gets shot just before he jumps over the fence. Eli rushes to put Abby in the same empty box in his backyard before the police get there as he has informed them again. Travis goes to the hospital and lies that he fell on rebar and gets his wound sewn. The doctor tells him that he knows it's a gunshot wound and will tell his mother. He borrows the nurse's phone to call Brian and asks him for help. As Travis is about to leave, his mom comes there worrying. He tells her that Eli has Abby and he is going to save her, but the sheriff stops him, keeping Travis on the watch for the night. The sheriff goes to Abby's house to see if they know where Abby is, and the parents call her a friend who informs them that Abby is with her, as good friends do. The sheriff leaves, now certain that Travis is a liar. Brian reaches the hospital and tries to convince the officer to let him see his friend and the man finally cracks. He gets in and they decide to break out. Brian distracts the police while Travis runs out. The sheriff gets informed and guards the back of the hospital to stop Travis from escaping and follows him as he gets out. But it turns out to be Brian and they take him in. Travis reaches the house. He opens the box in the backyard only to find it empty. Eli comes from behind pointing a gun at him. He binds Travis's hands and tells him to walk. The sheriff also reaches Eli's house and tries to call him out to no avail. They go towards the back of the house where Eli has silenced Travis at gunpoint. They assume that Travis must have gone somewhere else. Eli puts Travis in his van with Abby and Rosemary and begins driving. Travis suggests Abby chew the tape on her hands. They reach a cemetery where Eli takes Travis out and orders him to dig a grave at gunpoint. Inside the van, Abby has managed to untie herself. She sneaks out of the car and runs off. Travis manages to open the grave where the man was buried alive. Eli informs him that it is his English teacher's long-lost husband, Jack, and tells him that he killed him because he was sleeping with Rosemary. He adds that he had to punish Rosemary as well, but she begged for forgiveness, so he promised her to let her stay at home. And they were doing fine until Travis came along, snooping around. Travis tells him that he is a psycho, but Eli prefers to call himself lovesick. He says that he needs to put Rosemary down until the chaos Travis has caused blows over. He orders him to get Jack's body out. When he does, Eli points at Travis to shoot, but he begins to mock him, saying that Rosemary would hate it if he put her in the dirt, enraging Eli, who screams at him to shut up. Travis tells him that Rosemary is right behind him and tells him to ask her himself if she even loves him. Eli begins to see Rosemary's ghost, who belittles him, saying that she hates him. But it is actually Abby who has come back wearing a white dress, pretending to be Rosemary. Eli gets upset and distracted when Travis hits him, making him fall into the coffin. They shut the lid, but he gets out, strangling Travis. He asks Rosemary to help, but Abby hits him with the shovel, and they shut the coffin again. They bury him and leave. The next day, at the police station, the sheriff informs the two and their parents that Eli was in the grave for two hours and says that they did the right thing to tell the police. When outside, Travis and Abby kiss before walking away in each other's arms. Next, we see a frustrated Eli chained behind the bar shouting to be let out. He looks into the camera and says, Love sucks. What do you think about this movie? 
make a comment right below. If you want to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on our next videos on the screen. See you next time.